All right, we're going to do experiment 17 today. Uh, in experiment 17, it is the determination of the alkalinity of soda ash. So first, we're going to make about 0.1 molar HCl from about 6 molar HCl. To do that, uh, I've already done this, and I added about 4 mils of about 6 molar HCl to about 200 mils of deionized water. I did not measure these accurately as we will get the actual concentration of the 0.1 molar HCl to four significant figures. The reaction that we're going to do is uh, your HCl is going to react with your sodium carbonate. All right, and so to balance this reaction, we're going to need two moles of HCl to react with one mole of Na2CO3. And this balanced reaction gives two NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. Now, for this titration, the titration equation MV over C is equal to M, which is mass, divided by molar mass, time divided by C, which is your coefficient in your balanced chemical reaction. All right, so the molarity of HCl, that is what we're going to solve for in the first part. We're going to have our volume of HCl from our titration, which must be put into liters in order to have moles on the left. And then the coefficient of your HCl is right there. It is a 2. Your mass of sodium carbonate, we are going to weigh that out. It tells us about 0.1 to 0.13. We will have that accurate mass we, that will be put in there. The molar mass of Na2CO3 is easily found on the periodic table. And the coefficient of Na2CO3 in our balanced chemical reaction is a 1. All right, so in the first part, we are solving for the molarity of HCl. And that is going to be about 0.1. We're going to get it to four significant figures. <clears throat> In the second part, in the unknown, we are going to uh, have the same titration equation, except it is not going to be 100% sodium carbonate. It is an unknown. And so in the second part, we now have the accurate molarity of HCl. We will have our titration volume of HCl. The coefficient for HCl is still the same balanced reaction of two. What we will be solving for is the mass of pure sodium carbonate. The molar mass of sodium carbonate is the same as it was in part one, and your coefficient also a one, same as it was in uh, the first part. All right, and so once we have our mass of sodium carbonate, to find the percent of the sodium carbonate in the unknown, we simply take that mass of sodium carbonate, divide by the mass of the unknown that we weighed out, and multiply by 100. Now, in this titration, we might expect to see CO2 released. However, when you see me do this titration, no bubbles indicating CO2 gas are going to be released. So I have some data, I've done it, it does not release uh, CO2. Uh, the solubility of CO2 in water is 90 mils of CO2 in 100 mils of water at 25 degrees Celsius. So in these titrations, we are using very dilute HCl, 0.1 molar, uh, and uh, therefore the CO2 that we are generating is a very low concentration, and that is going to keep the CO2 in the solution. So we will not be seeing any CO2 being released. All right. Now, the last part is to find the percent of sodium oxide in the unknown. So your sodium carbonate is easily converted to sodium oxide and CO2 by heating it. So to calculate the percent of sodium oxide in the soda ash unknown from this reaction, uh, we see that one mole of sodium carbonate would produce one mole of sodium oxide. And so to find the moles of sodium carbonate, you simply take the mass of sodium carbonate that we got from the titration of the unknown, and divide by the molar mass of sodium carbonate. To get the moles of sodium oxide, we take the mass of sodium oxide, which is what we're gonna solve for, 
because we can look up the molar mass of sodium oxide. So we solve for the mass of sodium oxide to get the percent of sodium oxide in the unknown. We take this mass of sodium oxide, divide by the mass of the unknown, multiply by 100, and we will have that information. All right, so I have done runs one and two already, and here are the results. All right, so uh, the initial run, uh, your initial concentrate or initial volume of HCl was 0 0.10. The final volume of HCl 22.98. Uh, that was required to neutralize 0 0.1230 grams of pure sodium carbonate. In run two of that part one, we I took um, in this case 0 0.1011 gram of the pure sodium carbonate. My initial volume of HCl was 0.09, and then it reached the end point. I read the burette, and it was 19.03 mils of HCl. And then I ran the unknown two times. The first time, I weighed out 0.1282 grams. My initial volume of HCl was 0.01. My final volume was 10.68 when it reached the equivalence point, the end point as it was a color change. Uh, and then in the run two, where I wanted to use more of the HCl, so I used more of the unknown. This time I weighed out 0 0.2081 grams of the unknown, and this was unknown number 55. Uh, and my initial volume was 0.42 mils for HCl, then the final volume, when it changed colors, the end point, uh, was 17.98. Alright, so we are going to do run three. Uh, we also are going to do a check of the water. Alright, so we're going to go to our lab stations and see that um, here we're going to have our uh, anhydrous sodium carbonate. So that is our pure sodium carbonate has been uh, put in the oven for two hours at 100 degrees Celsius to make sure that it is dry. And next to it is the soda ash unknown number 55. It was also placed in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius for two hours. All right, and so I am going to measure accurately on a four decimal place balance uh, the proper amounts as listed on the procedure and then we're going to do a titration. All right, so I already indicated that I took four mils of six molar HCl and I added it to 200 mils of water. And I now have that in a small beaker here. Also in the procedure, it said to mix uh, 0.5 grams of KHP which is potassium hydrogen phthalate um, in 50 mils of water and add four drops of the methyl orange indicator. So this is our methyl orange indicator. All right, and so this is a color that we're looking for. This is the color we're looking for in our titration. It is gonna go from a yellow to a peachish orange color. All right, so uh, we're going to do three titrations today. We're going to do one with the pure sodium carbonate. We're going to do one with just water to check our deionized water. And then the last one is going to be with our soda ash unknown number 55. All right. So I will put this down. All right. Let's see. Can you see the balance? All right, so I will put on my safety glasses. All right, and I have my way boat. We look at the directions, and the directions say way out uh, between 0.1 and 0.13 grams of your sodium carbonate.
All right, so we have 0 0.1075 grams. 0 0.1075 grams. All right, and so uh, it is a very small amount. I don't want to tip it up too much, but it is a very, very small amount. All right, and so I'm going to quantitatively transfer this to our Erlenmeyer flask. And so I will make sure that all of the solid goes in. I'm going to add 50 mils of deionized water, so to quantitatively add it, I am going to squirt water in and make sure that all of this is in my Erlenmeyer flask. Again, going to add 50 mils of water anyway, so I'm going to rinse this out very good. All of the sodium carbonate is now in this beaker, and then it has a 50 mil mark. Again, it is about 50 mils that you're going to dissolve it in, and so I added that until it hit uh, the 50 mil mark. Do the titration. I have to move my. All right. So. All right. So we're gonna have uh, our final solution is gonna have uh, this color here. So uh, when you have your methyl orange, it's not as nice as phenolphthalein, which goes from no color to a color. This is going to go from one color to another color. So we're going to go from a yellow to an orangish, peachish color. So we're going to add four drops of the methyl orange indicator. And we're going to have a yellow solution. All right, we're going to take our initial volume of our HCl. That is 0 0.02 mils. All right, so then we're going to add and we are going to wait for a yellow to an orange peachish uh, endpoint. So you cannot see any CO2. There's no bubbles of CO2 that are forming in the flask. Again, the concentration of this HCl is very small, not enough to release CO2. All right, getting pretty close to the end point here. I'm gonna slow it down and stay in orange a little longer each time.
fairly close to the same color now. So now we have the two colors that are the same. And so we have our endpoint. All right, and the final reading is 20.59. 20.59. All right. To our collection. All right, so I put in the 50 mils of just deionized water. We're going to check our water. I'm not going to uh, fill up this flask because it is not going to take much for water. And so four drops of methyl orange. So deionized water, four drops of methyl orange with the initial concentrate or initial volume of the HCl uh, being the 20.59. All right, so again, we're starting yellow. And one drop will change it to the correct color. And so it is at 21.5. One. No, sorry, 21.61. 20.61. All right, so it's insignificant. So the water is perfect. And so we don't have to worry about uh, the deionized water. So there's no calculations that we're going to do with the blank. It is just to make sure that our water is good. All right, and so our two numbers are uh, 20.59 and 20.61. Um, it was like one drop is all required to get it to that color. All right, so now we're ready for our last titration, uh, which is the unknown, number 55 again. Uh, and we're going to weigh out 0.15 to 0.25. And we will quantitatively transfer that as well. All right, I'm going to have to move my camera over. I'm over here again doing the unknown. And so I put in my wave oats. Brand new wave oat. All right. And I'm going to push the tear. And I want, no, oh, I think a good amount would be in the 0.2-ish area. Let's try that. It's a little higher than the other ones. 0 0.2245. 0 0.2245. All right. And so we will add that quantitatively to our Erlenmeyer flask. Again, we're going to need uh, 50 mils of deionized water, and so I'm going to quantitatively add this, that means I'm going to get every little bit of it into the Erlenmeyer flask. All right, it's going to require me to put 50 mils of deionized water anyway, so I'm going to rinse this out thoroughly to make sure that every bit of that unknown is into this Erlenmeyer flask. All right, so then I will fill it to the 50 mil mark, again, the 50 mils of deionized water is approximate. Deionized water is not going to have any effect on our titration as we saw when we did our blank. All right. All right, so we have dissolved our unknown soda ash, and now we add the four drops of methyl orange.
and then we have to fill, so it's going to have our yellow color, that's going to go to this orangish color. We need to fill up our HCL burette. All right, and so the initial reading is 0.18. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to add our HCO until we have The orange solution. All right, so initially I'm adding it very quickly, and now I'm going to slow it down. Again, we're looking for an orange color for our endpoint. And now it's going in much, much slower because I know that I'm getting closer to the endpoint. You can see the color lingering. It's very close. So we have our color match. All right, we just need our final volume of our HCL, which is 19.00, 19.00. All right, so that gives us our three runs uh, for uh, the pure sodium carbonate and three runs for our unknown uh, soda ash and our water was tested and it was perfect. Nothing wrong with our water. All right, that is the end for experiment 17.